Let me start with this deal because, of course, it does extend that period of time when unions cannot strike, but it's still a tentative deal, right? What do you make of it? Is it a breakthrough? Well, look, certainly it's a start in the right direction. We wouldn't want to see those rail unions in the US going out on strike. However, let's put this into some sort of context. In, in, 200 and, in 2021, we saw about $187 billion worth of value of goods moved through the rail network. On the trucking side, however, that uh, amount is uh, up to about $828 billion. So you can see there's quite a disparity. But it really would come down to looking at critical industries inside the US that would suffer the most if we did see that rail strike go ahead. But with that tentative deal now in place, yes, there are some safety measures that will, uh, that will uh, be uh, handed down. And we do think that we will see this strike uh, dissipate and workers will probably get some form of uh, pay increase and life will return to normal. So we saw U.S. NatGas, for example, selling off on the news. What commodities were you watching and what will you be in the lookout for until the ratification of this deal happens? Look, certainly inside the U.S., you'd have to be very careful on the coal market. Uh, primarily, it's one of the significant uh, payloads that rail, railways do carry. So one would be careful there in terms of uh, how you would get coal from, uh, from mine to, to uh, source. So... That's one we would be watching. Chemicals is the other. We do think that uh, there's significant uh, movements of uh, chemicals uh, through the rail network as well. So one would have to be watching very closely there for any price disparities. And, and finally, uh, although not a commodity, car parts, they're, they're the other big industry that would uh, be significantly impacted uh, by a, a, a close down of the rail network. But generally speaking, it would really have to be an extended strike over probably probably many weeks uh, before we would start to see some impact on the broader global commodity prices. Lennox, uh, uh, David, you talk about that sort of carry-through effect that might take some time to transmit. Do you see any winners and losers outside of the US in this scenario? Uh, yeah, look, one of the biggest losers, in fact, would be Europe. If you have a look at what's happening with coal, and again, we'll go back to coal, Europe started to uh, import from the US, we think, upwards of 2 million tonnes of coal this year. And China's the other big uh, importer of US coal. Something like 13 million plus, we reckon, will go into that country uh, in 2022. So one would suspect that, uh, that the coal would get to the ports by rail. So if that's tied up for any extended period of time. And of course, we all know what's happening in Europe with uh, the, the uh, gas uh, being uh, cut down. That would really cause some price spikes in, in um, Europe for, for uh, coal prices. David, I want to shift away from uh, these logistical challenges. When you take a look more broadly at this threat of demand destruction with these risks of global recession, with the risk of a prolonged slowdown in China, where do you see pricing for key metals like iron ore, for example? One would have to say that if you have a look at the current price of iron ore, it's been tenaciously sticking to around about $100 US a tonne. That would suggest to us that, yes, there is pressure on the, uh, the demand side coming out of China, but we are also seeing the Chinese authorities stimulating their economy in various sectors and in various ways. If we can see perhaps a transfer away from the, the property sector, which is currently in quite a, a, a mire, towards uh, perhaps further infrastructure, Infrastructure building inside China and they've got significant infrastructure still to be built that would just at least stabilize the iron ore prices and we think at the moment that the the markets are pricing that fully in because we are now well aware what's happening in the Chinese property market and we are well aware that uh, we are seeing stimulatory action taken by the uh, Chinese authorities and and as I've said Iron ore remains stubbornly stuck at around $100 US a tonne. So that would suggest that there is some tension there in the pricing. But one would have to be careful because the risk could be to the downside. It just depends on how further down we see the value of the, the Chinese property industry or property markets fall and just how, I guess, how much strength the Chinese authorities have to keep pushing through uh, infrastructure building plans.